Hey everybody, welcome to Living Power, your online Bible study where we're walking through the Bible in a year. Today is January 8th and boy, this was a short reading. Did you think so? I thought, well, I didn't even have to turn the page. It's just one page and that was really, really short. So I'm going to try to keep this video short and we're going to uh, make up some time here today. Um, what I think we should do is simply talk about the individuals um, and get to know a little bit about Jacob and uh, Rebecca or Isaac and Rebecca, and then of course Jacob is uh, is their second born son, um, and Esau. And we'll just um, we'll just kind of go through this, uh, looking at these individuals because they are patriarchs of the faith, and certainly we need to be able to recognize their names and know them when we hear them. We do say goodbye to Abraham today. He dies at 175 years old, so he lived a long, long life. Certainly not as long as his ancestors, the first people, and certainly not as long as the people will live in the millennial period, because as we'll learn later on in the year in the millennial millennial period, the thousand year reign of Christ, people will also live hundreds and hundreds, like we're talking eight and nine hundred years. So this is, this is young. He was a youngster. He was buried with his wife, Sarah, in the same cave that he had purchased for her. And Isaac, their son Isaac, is now the new patriarch of the faith. Isaac married Rebecca yesterday in the reading. And I noticed today that she had trouble conceiving. She also needed God's intervention, as did Sarah, to conceive a son. Did you catch how many years they were praying and waiting for a child? They were waiting 20 years for a child. So he, Isaac, was 40 when they got married, but they didn't have uh, Jacob or Esau and Jacob until he was 60. So we see over the course of time, Isaac is praying, interceding on behalf of his wife, and finally, in the right time, you know, God's timing is not always our timing, but in the right time, she did come to conceive and she had twins. We're going to talk about those twins today. So it's important to see that the promised line of the Abrahamic covenant is in place. They did have children. And that Isaac, none of the other children, but Isaac has received all of the inheritance. And remember in an earlier video, we talked about this concept of dividing and separating. This is a concept that we'll see over and over again in the Bible. And eventually we'll, we'll relate it to holiness versus the common and how we're called to be holy versus common and, and what that means. And we're, we're going to get there. The sons of Keturah. Um, and the sons of Ishmael actually become the Arab peoples who actually settle in the Middle East and North Africa. I did notice, you know, I was kind of glancing through these names, but if you're like me, you know, sometimes we, we read kind of quickly through this lineage list. And I did notice one that I recognized, though, and that was the Midianites. Do you remember the Midianites are, when we get to Moses, um, it, they are very significant to Moses, so I'll just I'll just say that, and then we'll get to that story, and we'll recognize. Oh, I know where the Midianites come from. I was wondering today what the difference is between a wife and a concubine in this context. So I did some digging, and here's what I found out: a wife, in order for Abraham to have a wife, there had to ha had to actually be a marriage contract. It was called a, a ketubah, K-E-T-U-B-A-H. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. And so with, when he married Sarah, there would have been a marriage contract. And all the sons uh, that came about from the union of these two were legitimate heirs to the father's household versus a concubine, which he could have taken a concubine by a simple declaration. She's my concubine now, and the benefit of being a concubine is that you do have the status of being part of the household, so you have measure of protection, um, you know, being cared for, that kind of thing. And I suppose you were expected to birth children, but the children that you birth, your sons, have inheritance only if the patriarch, if Abraham, wanted to give them anything. So that is some of the differences between a wife and a concubine. So um, let's talk about Rebecca. We said that she was barren for 20 the years. The covenant promise, though, that God made Abraham 
really foretold that they would have children because in order to fulfill the covenant that, that children had to be born. It was just the waiting. The waiting was probably very, very difficult. When the reading today says that the children in her womb struggled inside of her, um, I, I found in some of the study materials that they were actually uh, twisting and struggling with each other in her womb that it was very odd and she was like what in the world is going on here and that's what led her to pray and inquire of the Lord what's going on and then he explained to her that you have two nations in your womb you have two the fathers of two nations and there will be a struggle and of course we know that there has been a struggle we're gonna read for weeks about the struggle between the Edomites which come from Esau and Israel which comes from Jacob here again Esau is the firstborn and he's got hair all over his body there's actually a condition that I read about where you just you have an overgrowth of hair well he had it and he had red hair and that's how they gave him that name Harry and God told the mom, Rebecca, that Esau, even though he was born first, would actually serve the younger. So watch as the Bible unfolds, the story unfolds, the Edomites do serve the Israelites. Jacob, the second born son, as he was coming out of the womb, he had grabbed Esau's heel, and that's how he got named the heel grabber. And But God said he would be the greater. Jacob, don't miss this, this is so important. Jacob is the patriarch of the 12 tribes of Israel. And Jacob ends up having 12 sons and daughters, but the 12 sons of Jacob are the ones that we're going to be looking at when we study the 12 tribes of Israel. We will be studying him a lot in the next 10 chapters. So the principle here is that God often reverses man's thinking the natural order of things. Here again, he has chosen the son through whom the covenant promise will, will be, and he has chosen the secondborn, not the firstborn. So that is Jacob. So here's the application for today. Realizing the covenant promise requires faith. For 20 years, Isaac and Rebecca had to wait in faith for their children to be born. Today, sometimes for us, God's promises to us require a period of waiting and require faith. Number two, there's always a choice. There's always a dichotomy that we usually have to choose from. And number three, what appears to be logical to man is not always the wisdom and the choice of God. So the challenge for us is to remain faithful in our waiting, knowing that God's promises are sure and true and everything that he says in his word about us, about our future, about his plans will absolutely come true. Well, I hope this has been a blessing to you today. We're going to go ahead and quit now and tomorrow we will continue in the book of Genesis. I hope this has been a blessing to you. Shalom to you and your family.